Welcome to Take a Break, the show where we hit pause on all the crazy things happening in the world and just focus on the cool and fun stuff. I'm your host, Vinayak Nair, and that is Murphy. How you feeling, Murphy? Okay, I didn't know that you loved cookies so much. Anyway, I'm feeling mathematical today. Mathematical! And I hope you are too. And our top story for the week is about balloons. Cause it's my birthday! Nah, I'm just kidding. That's in December. I'm talking about tennis court sized balloons designed to fly into the stratosphere and provide internet access to people living in communities where they can't get it. The company that has started deploying these balloons is known as Loon. These balloons are essentially an alternative for cell phone towers and fiber optic cable networks that are honestly cost ineffective to build in less densely populated areas. So Luna started in Sub-Saharan Africa, a region of the world where internet access was 25% in 2017, according to the World Bank. That's three of every four people without the ability to go online, which is ridiculous, especially given how reliant we are today during this pandemic. Proof of concept being that you're watching this video right now. So anyway, Loon started putting up these balloons in partnership with African wireless provider Telcom in Kenya. To inaugurate the service, Telcom executives traveled to the town to show their Loon colleagues just how well the service works on the ground. This is using such pioneering technology. This is a tiny rural community and to get strong 4G signal, I mean, I, I can understand why John's been smiling mola to mola, literally. In their initial stages of testing, they have found that more than 30,000 people were able to connect. Let me know what you think about this whole situation in the comments below. But now I'd like to turn it over to the weather with our one and only weatherman, Rob Cobb. Thanks, Vinayak. The weather's looking all right today. We've got lots of sunlight and it's actually pretty hot. Uh, if you plan to go outside, make sure that you stay hydrated and cool down often. Uh, I honestly wish we could have some rain today. Speaking of which, do you know when it rains money? This is a genuine scientific inquiry. Rob, if this is one of your stupid jokes, I swear to God. When there's change in the weather. Rob, you gotta keep moving. You are a professional weatherman. <laughs> because change means coins, and that would be money, and that would be falling out of the sky, right? So, you know, change in the weather. <laughs> I have a book of other people you can hire, honestly, like look at this. Look at that experience, right? This guy, it's not even that impressive, but you know what? He's gonna do the job. It's like every single time, like I'm... Hey, are we still recording? Thank you, Rob. And our next story is about Alex Rebeck. Now, if you don't know who Alex Rebeck is, he's the host of the popular trivia show called Jeopardy, where contestants answer questions about anything and everything by phrasing their reply in the form of a question, like... What is bands? Yeah. What is a zither? Good. What is a trombone? Trombone is right. Trebek has been hosting for the last 36 years and more than 8,000 episodes, becoming a staple of American television. Unfortunately, last year, the beloved host found out that he had stage four pancreatic cancer. So Trebek has been receiving treatment and well wishes for the past year, despite the pandemic. And on his 80th birthday, he released a memoir titled, The Answer Is Reflections on My Life. Over the past 30 years, I've been approached many times by publishers and writers to do an autobiography, but I've always turned them down. I didn't think I had anything pertinent to say to the world. And my life was not particularly exciting. I'm no different from many other people. I've never seen myself as anything special. And that's why if you listen to Johnny Gilbert's announcement at the opening of Jeopardy, I'm introduced as the host rather than the star. This is not going to be a standard memoir. It's an aperçu of Alex Trebek, human being. And that to me is truly epic. Now I'd like to move on to a large scale project to combat climate change that is taking place in India. So a few years back, the Indian government pledged to have one third of its area covered by forests 
Now they did this as part of one of their contributions towards reaching United Nations Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. And basically, if you don't know what the SDGs are, they are a set of milestones set by the United Nations to determine, you know, if we're making progress as a world towards big global issues. Some of these SDGs that relate to India's pledge include improving life on land through halting biodiversity loss and tackling desertification and fighting against climate change. Last year in August, for instance, a million Indians got together and planted 220 million trees on a single day, like no biggie. They struck again recently when 2 million Indians planted 20 million trees in the state of Uttar Pradesh while still following social distancing guidelines. But it just shows you how when so many people are operating on the same wavelength towards a higher purpose at the same time, they can accomplish incredible things. They planted the trees along the Ganges, which is a very historic river, uh, to keep it clean from the CO2 in the air. It's not even an Indian fad. There are other countries that are working on a large scale to do similar things with planting trees like China and Pakistan and Madagascar and many, many others. Um, but now I'd like to pass the mic over to JK Shakespeare, our diction correspondent, with the Words of the Week, a segment in which he'll teach you some new words and demonstrate how those words can be used in real life. If you want to sound smart, but you just don't know how, simply study these words and you'll be taken about. At every interview, you'll be sounding chic due to these words of the week. Clamber, climb awkwardly. Fungible, freely exchangeable for or replaceable by. Singularity, the quality of being one of a kind. Fame, in a willing manner. Catalyst, something that causes an important event to happen. Rebus, a representation of a word by symbols. Adamantine, having the hardness of a diamond. Hey, are you talking to me? Have you ever wanted to climb something really tall, but were too scared of heights? I mean, I guess. I don't particularly care for- Then the all-new Climby Pro is just for you. Using our patented Reflecticon technology, you can keep your eyes focused on the summit at all times. This is a mirror. The singularity of this product allows for a climbing experience like no other. If you even think about looking down, you'll still be looking right up thanks to our revolutionary design. Now, I'm pretty sure this is just a mirror. If you don't believe me, let's hear what some real people had to say about our product. Wait, aren't all people inherently real? No. Wow. This is a great product. When I go climbing, I'd never have to clamber around. Great example of tech as a catalyst for change. This is such a stupid idea. Can you just do this rebus? I love it. They would fain buy this product in a heartbeat, and you should too. With its cutting edge design, an adamantine glossy surface, every time you look down, you'll really be looking up. Cash, check, PayPal, Bitcoin, we accept everything. It's all fungible. Just give us your money. But if you call now at 1-800-CLIMB, that's 1-800-CLIMB, we'll throw in the Climbly Pro Illuminatrix for only $100 extra. Order yours today. Oh, and that looks like all the time we have right now for the words of the week. Uh, so now I'd like to move on to my weekly recommendation. Uh, I'd like to step back for a moment. Part of the reason why I decided to make this show in the first place is because, well, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. 2020, it kind of sucks. And have you ever just wanted to yell and release all the anger and sadness that the events of 2020, like Corona, racism, and Karens have brought about without looking like a lunatic? Well, now you can let it all out, literally. Now the tourism department of Iceland is fully aware of this, and they've actually made use of it by creating a website where you can literally record yourself yelling and then letting it all go in the picturesque beauties of Iceland. According to Zoe Aston, a therapist and mental health consultant, screaming, releases the pent-up stress that is stored in your amygdala, a part of your brain. I don't know if that was the amygdala. And it's been used as a tool in therapy since the 1970s. So if you want to do this for yourself, go to lookslikeyouneedicelin.com. I know Murphy's, you know, a little hesitant to let it out himself, 
Uh, but if you have any thoughts on any of the positive stories going on, or any positive stories of the week that you'd like to share, please make sure to do so in the comments down below, as well as any feedback that you have to improve the show, as I think there's always room uh, to improve. So if you're still here, I want to thank you so much for watching, and if you like this, check out my other Take a Break shows uh, and other videos, and please consider subscribing to support the channel. Uh, anyway, stay safe, relaxed, and awesome, and peace.